In order to install an aftermarket amplifier for a car audio system, we need a way to take the factory speaker level signal and adapt it for the line level inputs of that amplifier. A great way to do that is with this device right here, a line output converter. But there are many different line output converters out there. What features should you look for and how are these installed into a system? I'm Mark, welcome to Car Audio Fabrication, the channel where together we learn how to master car audio and how to design, build, and install our dream car audio system. Let's find out all about LOCs. To kick things off, let's fully understand when are you going to need a line output converter? Now, if you have a factory car audio system, you know, with a factory radio and you don't necessarily want to replace that factory radio, especially because a lot of factory radios nowadays are fully built in where they have a screen and climate controls and vehicle function controls and all the computer functionality built in, it's a lot harder to replace those with an aftermarket radio. So in that case, we're going to want to take the speaker level signal coming out of our factory radio, bring it into our line output converter, and that's why we'd wanna use this to adapt that high level signal to a low level signal that we can then use for our amplifiers. Obviously, I have a factory car audio system outside of the vehicle right here. But the other thing I do want to point out is a lot of factory car audio systems now have a stock OEM amplifier. You're going to see this a lot of times with factory premium systems, but even if we have a stock amplifier and we're adding an aftermarket amplifier, a lot of times we're still going to need a line output converter for that situation as well. Now, understanding your factory car audio system is important because it's going to better determine if you should get what's called an active line output converter. There's passive line output converters and active line output converters. Active means that we're going to have to connect a 12 volt constant lead and a ground. We're going to have to actually send power to these devices here. These are two different LOCs, line output converters. These are both active. And an active line output converter is what you're oftentimes going to need if you do have that factory premium system with the factory amplifier. The reason for that is these active line output converters can handle a lot more voltage coming in on the speaker level inputs. But here's the thing guys, let me give you a big tip here. Even if you have a factory car audio system that doesn't have the stock amplifier, if it's only the stock radio, I still recommend that you avoid passive line output converters and get an active one. The reason for that is that the signal that you get out of these active line output converters is so much more strong that you don't need to turn up the gain level as high on your aftermarket amplifier which leads to less noise, less issues, and just a better sounding signal. It's in my opinion, really, really worth it to spend that little bit of extra money and get an active line output converter. Now we're gonna talk about how to wire these and what some of the advanced features are that are needed for today's latest vehicles. But really quick, I do want to thank our monthly channel sponsor, Audio Control. Audio Control obviously makes these two devices here but they also have a full range of factory integration devices that allow us to adapt many different situations for factory signal to an aftermarket amplifier. Audio Control's been around for a long time making really high quality gear and I actually have a separate full video that I definitely recommend that you guys check out after this one that I'll link for you guys. It really goes into detail on what the other devices do and what you need those for outside of just using a line output converter. To find that video and learn more about audio control, check out the links down in the video description. To start with installing our line output converter, we're going to find a safe location for it to be mounted inside the vehicle. As far as wire connections go, we're going to connect to the speaker level signal. In this case, on my test setup here, these connections here are connected to the different speaker wire outputs that would normally connect to the speakers in the vehicle. And in this case, I connected both the left and right side connections with the positive and negative connection. It is important on each of these connections that you do make sure that you properly connect to the positive and negative. So a good way to determine what is positive and negative is to do your research online for the different wire color codes at the speaker or to verify, I always like to double check just to be sure with a polarity testing tool. It's also very important that wherever you're tapping in for the signal has the frequencies of information that you're looking to reproduce on your aftermarket amplifier. So an example for 
what I mean by that. Let's say that we were adding, let's say this is a subwoofer amplifier, so we need signal for that subwoofer amplifier. We're obviously going to want the subwoofer frequencies to be coming into our line output converter so that we can convert them and send them out. So if we were to tap into something like the signal for the tweeters, let's say that our factory premium system has a tweeter in each sail panel in the front of the vehicle. If we were to tap into that signal and that signal is only the high frequency information, we're obviously not going to get any bass coming through our system. So for something like a subwoofer amplifier, we'd probably want to use the rear speakers or if there's a factory premium subwoofer, we'd want to use that signal. Now the next connections we need to make is a 12 volt constant lead. That's just going to be a constant 12 volts positive coming in to our line output converter since this is an active LOC. We're also going to want to connect the ground so that connects to the body of the vehicle. We want a remote in lead. So this is a switched 12 volt source that will tell the line output converter when to turn on because we don't want it on all the time. And then finally, not all LOCs have this, but the LC2i Pro here from Audio Control does. This is the remote out. We would connect the remote out wire to the remote in of our aftermarket amplifier. And the advantage of that is now we have a slight turn on delay between this turning on and the aftermarket amplifier being told to turn on, which can help avoid issues like turn on pop. So now I've got those wires there simulated. And the last connection is obviously we need to send the signal out of our line output converter to our aftermarket amplifiers. And we're gonna do that with our RCA signal wire going into the amp. So for the most part, that's all the connections you're going to see with installing a line output converter. The only additional connection that you might see is installing a base level control. So that gives you the ability if we were using this for a subwoofer amplifier, or even if we wanted to use it as a master volume control for a multi-channel amplifier, we could have that separate level controller up in the front of the vehicle if we wanted to control the amplifier separately from the rest of the system. But with that said, depending on your application, that's not required to have. But for most cases where you're adding something like, let's say this was a subwoofer system, that is definitely nice to have to be able to independently adjust that subwoofer volume separately from the rest of the system. So what unique features should you keep an eye out for on LOCs? Well, a cool feature that these particular LOCs here have is a different turn on mode where you don't have to have the remote in wire connected to tell this to turn on. This is advantageous because you don't have to find that wire in your vehicle for this to connect to. Audio control calls this their great turn on mode, their GTO mode, and you can see the switch for it right there. If we were to activate that GTO mode, we no longer need this blue wire that I have connected right here. Instead, what this does is it monitors the speaker level inputs, and once it detects that there is a speaker level signal coming in, the device then knows to turn on. What's super cool about that though is we could still use the remote out feature and then tell our amplifier to turn on. This just makes for a little bit more simple of an installation and both the LC2i Pro and the LC2i have that feature. There is something a little bit different here with the Pro version without getting too into detail that gives you an additional option for that trigger mode that might be needed depending on your vehicle. Now another thing to watch out for on LOCs, another cool feature, is a lot of times with a factory car audio system, as you turn up this volume, the head unit will intentionally roll off the bass performance. In other words, the bass won't be as loud. And factory car audio systems do that in order to protect the inexpensive stock speakers. With a feature like Audio Control's AccuBase, you can set it up so that as you turn up the volume on your system, at the point that that roll off would normally start, the AccuBase can bring that bass back into the signal, which is super important for a subwoofer setup. So you've got your AccuBase set up there, and again, more advanced LOCs have more features. So in this case, this one has a nice light that allows you to set that up more accurately. You're also oftentimes going to have level controls on a line output converter. So that's the same between these two versions here. But new features that you're gonna see on the most advanced versions of LOCs today are things like this that allow for better factory integration with today's latest vehicles. 
As an example, a lot of times these stock amplifiers, if you were to disconnect the factory speakers from that amplifier, it really doesn't like that and it kind of acts up and will do weird things. So what's cool about this LOC is we can simulate the load and we have different options depending on the vehicle here, but we can simulate the load that is connected so the amplifier is going to think that there's still a speaker connected if you were doing that sort of install where you were removing stuff and reinstalling new speakers that are now powered by an aftermarket amplifier, you now have an option to avoid issues with that load selection. Additionally, another really cool feature for some of these more advanced LOCs is ground isolation. Having different ground isolation options helps you to avoid potential noise issues, again, depending on the vehicle. So tons of cool features, but with all that said, there are some things that a line output converter cannot do. As an example, let's talk about crossovers. Let's say that we were using a multi-channel amplifier and we were installing some tweeters on two of the channels. With small tweeter speakers, you don't wanna be sending them base information, but let's say that we were connected to a full range signal because that's the only signal that we could get in the vehicle. Let's say that it didn't have a factory premium system with a tweeter level signal already. We can't control crossovers with a line output converter. In other words, we're gonna have a full range signal coming in and a full range signal going out. So something like a crossover which controls the frequencies going to a speaker, we need to make sure that we're either controlling that somehow else upstream or controlling that with the amplifier itself. Another thing that a simple line output converter like this does not do is control equalization. A lot of times with these factory premium systems, they'll have an EQ curve built in, which means they have boost and cuts at different frequencies in order to get the factory speaker sounding good. This EQ curve can change from speaker to speaker. Now you have to understand that whatever that EQ curve is on the signal coming into the line output converter, it's going to be exactly the same EQ curve coming out and going into your amp. With a simple install, imagine that this is something like a subwoofer amplifier. It's not gonna be as big a deal if there is an EQ curve applied, but with something like mids and highs, if there is an EQ curve applied to that signal, that's something that you're likely going to want to correct in order to get the best performance out of your aftermarket amp. So understanding what some of those other devices do in that video that I mentioned earlier is definitely valuable for you guys to understand. Now the final thing to really note here, and if you guys are familiar with this amplifier here, there are a lot of amplifiers on the market nowadays that essentially have the technology of a line output converter built in. You're gonna find that the amplifiers that have good LOC technology built in are usually the higher value amplifiers. So if you're on a budget or if you're using a simple amplifier, something like a subwoofer amplifier, you're likely still going to need the line output converter. You're not gonna have all that technology built within the amp. But just so you guys fully understand, with this amplifier here, what we could do is we could have the speaker level signal, these wires here, connected straight into the amplifier, we would never even have to connect these signal wires at all because within this amplifier itself, we could bring in the signal and then we could simply have all the speaker wires going out to our new speakers or subwoofers. This particular amplifier here is actually a D-series amplifier, which means it has a DSP built into the amp, which means we can connect to a computer and I can control crossovers, I can fix the equalization, and all those other things that we talked about, I can do that all inside of the amp itself, so that really, if you had an amplifier that's this advanced, you'd really have no need for the LOC. So when it comes to installing an aftermarket amplifier, you now know the value of an LOC. Be sure to consider the LC2i or LC2i Pro or whatever device is needed for your particular system from our show sponsor, Audio Control. You can learn more about all the different options they have at the links down in the video description. A special thanks to them along with Mike, Jerry, Mo, William, and the rest of the Patreon membership team. Big thanks to those guys for making these videos possible and thank you of course to you dudes as well for tuning in and watching.